This is the periodic table of elements. And we come to know the periodic table of elements by the way it looks. On the left side, you have like two columns of stuff that is quite high vertically, all right? And then it kind of sinks down to something like a valley at the bottom uh, over here. It kind of sinks down to like a short, wide uh, valley. And then it kind of pops up again, and then it's like a larger, wider cliff. And then it has the very end, it has this little thing up here that's like a, a saw eye, all right? And, and that, this is what we generally associate as, as the period table. And then we got like just two rows of stuff down at the bottom. And, and it's like, what the heck is it doing with it? Well, it turns out that the periodic table kind of looks like this in, in, in its general shape. You have the two columns over here, which represents the two columns over here. And then right at the bottom, you get something that drops really, really far down. And it turns out that these two rows at the bottom should be inserted right over here at the last two rows of the periodic table. Now, these uh, elements here have since been discovered and most of it, some of it has been named, uh, but it's not in this version of the periodic table that I've got here. So these two rows should be inserted right over there, okay? So it should be inserted there and everything on the right of that where it's inserted should shift to the right. And so it should shift to the right. So what we got is something that's high, goes down really, really low, and then it jumps up a little bit again because here you got four rows and here you got two rows, so it goes up and two more rows. And then at the very right of it, you have it goes up two more rows. And then you have the little nudgy thing at the top right corner. And that's how the periodic table should look like. Um, the fact is it doesn't look like this is because paper, publishing paper was invented before the period table was kind of like uh, set in stone, all right, the modern ones uh, at least. And so um, when, when people wanted to publish the period table, it said like, um, this is just way too long. This original period table, the way it's constructed is just way too long. You gotta, it's gotta be modified. And so what people do is like, thought and thought about it, and then decided to take all this, the two bottom rows, and put it up at a, at a corner, a bottom corner somewhere, and then the, the rest of the periodic table will shift to, to the left, all right? So this whole thing here will shift to the left. And so you've got a much shorter periodic table that fits on a piece of paper. Wonderful. All right, in landscape mode. Now, Let's talk about how the periodic table is, is, is kind of arranged. So on the left side of the periodic table, we've got what we call metallic elements. Elements that are metals, okay? And the so at the, uh, so at the uh, top right corner, you've got what we call the non-metals, the non-metallic elements, and including this last column of elements here. So these are all non-metallic elements. And the general characterization of uh, elements is that it goes from metallic, 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 and it slowly becomes semi-metallic, right? And then stops being metallic altogether, all right? So, how do we group the periodic table? The first column, or every of the columns are called groups. So everything from the top to the bottom, or the bottom to the top, no matter how you look at it, the vertical uh, plane are called groups. Everything from left to right or right to left uh, on the horizontal plane are called periods. So um, the period table also is categorized into two types of elements. The main group elements, the main block elements, which are elements right at, that are really, really tall, right? So it's like these two elements, these two groups of elements, as well as all these groups of elements. And then you got your transition elements, okay? 
the ones that are right there and here. And then you got these groups of uh, these uh, series of elements, which we call the lanthanide and the actinide uh, series, and they, they are just down here. We don't generally look at those because uh, it's just don't. It's not at this level at least. Okay, but. Um, let's talk about some of the common groups in the periodic table. So the first column or the first group is called the alkali metals. The alkali metals. Okay. The second group over here are called the alkaline earth metals. The alkaline earth metals. And then we have the last group here on the right, these are called noble gases. This last group here are called noble gases. And then we have the halogens, which are the second to the right over here, are called halogens. All right? So here we've got a whole bunch of names now. We've got alkali, alkaline earth, lanthanide, actinide, transition elements. Non metals that we've talked about includes all these halogens and noble gases. And then we've got elements that are kind of funny. They act sometimes they act like metals, sometimes they don't, depending on their mood. No, actually not. And they are called metalloids or semi-metals. Okay? So 